The moon is a harsh mistress, a military base, a computer. From Broom Lake, the armed forces send up commuters. Lunar particle beams cause floods, quakes, droughts. Weather control is population control. Have you figured that out? It should be front page in the space age. At this date, somebody got to rattle your cage. Greetings, colleagues, across town, across the globe. Here we are again on the 19th of May in the year of our Lord, 2022. Can you believe we've made it this far? Well, all of us do. Who do I mean by all of us? Me and my investigators. As usual, some of the very best persons to investigate issues are part of my team. And they're not just part of my team, they're here with me tonight. And so I'd like to first of all, well, before I introduce them, you're wondering why we've been away. These investigators of mine sometimes get involved in very sensitive work and I can't even get in touch with them. But I rounded them up for tonight. First investigator you need to hear from and about, Jack Pott. Jack is uh, very well known in some quarters. Uh, he is a recognized authority on sperm migration in Western Europe. That, uh, that, that's true, boss. I actually got interested in that because, sadly, my, my, my boys don't migra migrate very far, so I wanted to study possible ways of improving my migration patterns, and, and so I w focused on Western Europe. How, how is that coming? Uh, <laughs> or however sa you reacted. Sa sa sadly, I have not seen much improvement. But. I see. Uh, well, one area where you have improved not only the lives but the wardrobes of others is in your uh, work as a jazz industry wardrobe consultant. Um, just exactly what does a, a consultant like that well, do? Pretty much I advise them what not to wear. For instance, you don't wear jazz being jazz. You don't want to match anybody else in the, in the band or even match. Right, right, right. Clothing. No uniforms. No, yeah, and then you also, uh, I won't name any names, but several pianists I knew uh, wanted to uh, play in speedos. And then my most famous case is probably uh, Art Tatum Totter, who, who wanted to play in a full, full on cat girl costume. And I advised him against that. I think that well, probably you, saved his career. 
You, you also saved the career of Arnett Coleman Stove, as I recall, because... Well, well that's true, but I, I try not to brag too much. Oh, well, well, okay. Uh, you have served as the... You are now President Emeritus of the Frog, Let, Frog Leg Debt Rehearsal Group. Um, just exactly uh, what does that group do? I mean, well, what we, do you do for that group? Well, I, I counsel people on that they're... they're surely heading into debt as the year goes on, and some of them are a little bit uncomfortable with what that entails, so I advise them to borrow up to the maximum amount you're allowed and then don't pay it back. I see, I see. Um, uh, you have a current book. Um, uh, we've got a slide. We show you the cover of that book, A Podiatrist Looks at the Supreme Court. Now, I, I've read part of it. I, I, I kind of stopped reading because you know, a lot of people have opinions about the Supreme Court these days, but this book seems to be just about you picking up some guy who said he wanted to uh, go to Washington. Uh, yeah, he pretty much just wanted to see the Supreme Court, but I, I told him what, what he needed to focus on when he went there. He needed to stay on his toes, put his best foot forward, and... and and properly enjoy the Supreme Court. About probably tough advice for a podiatrist type of a person, I guess. Um, you know... It, 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 admittedly, that advice was a little bit corny, but uh, okay, I, I um, still think it was sound. I have discovered that one of your interests, I don't know if you want to call it a hobby or an interest, you are trying to figure out who actually wrote Shakespeare's plays and you have now decided that you know who it is? Yes, it's a, a Dolores, Dolores Gibbons, pardon me, who's a, uh, a housewife from Detroit. And she's, uh, she's actually 750 years old, but doesn't look a day over 135. So she was around during yeah, the... Yeah, she was, she was around during that time. And in fact, uh, what, what led me on to being suspicious about her was she, uh, you know, back, back a few, several, many years ago, she had a, an older dog, named mm -hmm. Spot, uh -huh. he was, she would want to send him out to do his business, and uh, he, he was very stubborn, so he didn't want to go out, so she would, she, she would come up to him and, out, out, damn Spot. So that, that light bulb went off in my head. Ah, fascinating. I, I, I bet a whole lot of amateur Shakespeare sleuths never thought of that. Well, but that's why you pay me the big bucks, boss. Well, uh, big in in contrast with some fourth world economies. Right, it, it, right. It's, uh, okay, um, another investigator you may have heard about if you've never seen in person, Ann Teak. Uh, Ann is the founder of the Youth Movement for Rapid Aging. Is, is that right? That is true, and well, hi, I'm just tickled to be here, by the way. I, we're um, tickled, too. Oh, and uh, I, I just wanted to mention, uh, on Jack's note, now see, I'm past 135, but a lady never tells, as you know. <laughs> I am waiting until I hit 150 so I can collect the maximum on my Social Security. Uh, now, as far as the youth movement for rapid aging, a lot of young people just kind of want to fast forward right to retirement, and really, who can blame them? Well, certainly I can't blame them. Uh, some of those people, I, I think they probably also listen to your Arthro podcast, um, Cigarette Repair for Dummies. That's probably some of the same people. I do, yes. I do have a lot of listeners. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Many of them... Uh, are they have a lot of broken menthols and those are about to become illegal and so they would like to know how to repair them. Uh huh. You've done, um, speaking of repair, you've done some award winning reporting on the shoe sizes of royals. I, I assume you mean the royal family. Yes, and uh, uh, it's pretty fascinating because a lot of that comes down to. Uh, imperial measurements versus metric measurements. So you can get some wildly different sizes. Now, Princess Diana, for instance, uh, she wore a size 38, which sounds very that large very to large. us in, in, in the United States, but really it's about, <coughs> pardon, a size seven. Okay, uh, I'm curious, um, speaking of, of, of size seven, you have a book called Flat Tires, 
as metaphors for the new geography. I, now, I don't know about the new geography except that I've heard some people are incontinent or they don't know what continent they're on. That is true and they find out real quick as soon as they get a flat tire because you need to learn how to read a map and most people don't. Well, most people don't read at all <laughs> these days. Uh, and speaking of reading, one of the great writers, and, and you heard it from Jack, um, he thinks he knows who Shakespeare really was, and I understand you are also looking at that subject. I am indeed. Uh, well, first I looked at Francis Bacon, like many others. Yeah, that's but where people start. He yep. was a bit, uh, well, that, well, that kind of led me to uh, Pope, Pope Milton. Well, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute now. Uh, Francis Bacon, uh, he, he was a guy who struggled with being a vegetarian. Yes, he was very much on the fence about being a vegetarian because obviously they got the family name somewhere. So, uh, uh, so that led to that famous line about uh, to beef or, or not to beef. Yes, to beef or not to beef, exactly. See? Well, golly, so that's a different theory. I, I can see why that would resonate. I, I, I don't remember that much about Milton of Salisbury, though. I think that's what he was called pre-Pope, but he, he was a plumber, right? One, oh, it, you could say, in a sense, yes. And he, he uh, discovered some of the continents that, no. Well, he was he was a bit incontinent himself. Uh, he oh. well he he just kind of he he followed some others. But he, he was yeah. an inventor, if I remember. He was indeed. Uh, he was sort of a master of upgrades, what we might call the version 2.0 of everything. Now, he was the inventor of the round wheel uh, because the, the the flat wheels were really not getting anybody nowhere. Right. Um, he also invented the leather couch uh, because before that time, all couches were made of scrambled eggs and that was not really working. That was not sustainable for a typical family. I'll be dead gum. Well, I've learned something already and we're, we're just a few minutes into the production. As such, I, I need to get around to my third investigator here because we don't want to spend all of our time on biographies as fascinating as they are. But Lou Quorn, uh, Lou Quorn is with us tonight in a sense. Um, in another sense, he's, he's never really with us. He's, uh, for example, right now you're serving as an anecdote director of the Museum of Crab Pictures, right? Hmm. Yes. Have you ever seen a crab smile? Uh, no, not, not lately, I well, guess. That's, that's why we're doing the research. Okay. Uh, you are also a, a chief financial officer uh, of, well, the chief fungible officer of the uh, Fund for Extravagant Solutions. Is that right? Yes, well, you know, I am very interested in the uh, new blockchain opportunities and new currencies, and so I've invested in something called Titcoin. This is something is the uh, French note as the Maison Charbonnier. It is a form of chickadee and um, this kind of transport of money between borders is very close to my heart, this titcoin. Um, that, uh, that explains a lot. Uh, you also, you're a developer of uh, online autopsies for vegetarians. I, I've looked at that site. It, it confuses me, actually. It confuses you? Yeah, yes, sir. We are uh, trying to eliminate the death of various vegetables. I think you should take it very seriously. An artichoke the moment of death when you have achieved artichokedom. This is something that cannot be overlooked by right. people who take their vegetarianism seriously. Okay, so, so speaking of um, vegetarianism and, and taking it seriously, is that I've heard that is a source of stomach problems and you have a book. Um, you have a book, it's interesting to me, uh, they call you Dr. Lukewarm. I didn't know you were a doctor. Yes. Well, I'm a doctor on TV. 
Oh, okay. And, uh, and um, well, okay, I, I've, I've made some sense of my stomach problems, but if you had to, to you know, just give a general uh, opinion that everybody could pay attention to? Yes, you should pay attention to your stomach. Oh, okay. Uh, now, look, two of the investigators who are pals of yours, I, I know you talk to each other, do, you aren't also investigating Shakespeare's real identity, are you? As a matter of fact, you know, when I think about it, back at the time when you had that Globe Theater in its heyday, they had something called the Technology, Entertainment, and Design Gaffers Union, what we would today call the Ted Cruz. I have my suspicions. I'll be dead gum. But I, I thought the Ted Cruz, if I remember my history, they, they were sort of a uh, secret society, but they also went around pillaging much of uh, the known world mm. at one time. They were wreaking havoc. The ro rosy crustaceans or rose, uh, Russian Khrushchevs, I, I forget the society. So when Shakespeare said, um, uh, cry havoc, let slip the dogs of war, did I remember correctly that in some history books, the Russia Crucians are also called the dogs of war? Yes, yes, uh, the uh, puppies of perturbedness, yes, similar. I see, and so, um, now, they, these, these people aren't still around today, are they? Well, I mean... The Ted Cruz. Yes, the Ted Cruz and the Hawthorns and the Cawthorns and various people throwing themselves across the TSA line. Uh, they, they, they weren't also at the January 6th Capitol uh, meeting, I think that's yes, what it's called. Yes, the party in D.C. Yes, from a year and a half ago. I see. Well... They are part of a wrecking crew uh, with, a, uh, with a long, long history. Mm. I, I guess that's what we could say. The crashing, um, the crashing party of our American democracy. Okay, well, let's uh, start at the top talking about what's going on. And uh, like they used to say in some political circles, it's the economy, Cupid. Or did they say stupid? I, I don't know. To me, stupid, Cupid, you know, same thing. Uh, number one, inflation is out of control. Or it's, anyway, it's supposed to be the job of the Federal Reserve Board uh, to deal with that. But apparently, the, the Federal Reserve is bored. Uh, that's the way I understand it. Um, but a lot of, uh, at least the younger crowd, seems to really be interested in the 40-year the high. Um, you were telling me, Jack, that some of your younger students in, the, in your frog leg uh, debt program, they, they've tried everything there is yeah, on they're, this. We're, they're intently uh, researching to, to get a 40-year high themselves. And it's kind of their lifetime goal. So we're, right now we're, we're kind of stuck in the, the mid three to four hour range, but we think with some more proper funding and more study, we can get a, a lifetime or 40 year. A 40 year high. Well, uh, good luck on that. Um, while, while that's going on, of course, gas prices are really causing problems for a lot of America. Uh, I understand though, uh, maybe y'all would agree with me or maybe not, that the uh, fossil fuel industry uh, they're just saying this is a temporary bump in the road sort of thing, and it'll be all over as soon as we kill off the, the uh, Green New Deal. That's how I understand it. But anyway, there are a lot of scams going on right now because of that. I looked at one on the Internet the other day. A guy was saying he has a program that really works. Um, libtards are going to be... Um, disappointed when they find out that the fossil fuel companies are taking them, you know, uh, for a ride. <laughs> no, I see this as all dinosaurs legislating over the bodies of dinosaurs. Well, it is, but, um, well, it, well, it is, and he's right. But, but this guy, this guy 
uh, he was talking about walking everywhere, and that doesn't work. So a lot of people are, are reading the sites about uh, putting things in your gas tank. Now, for example, I've asked my dogs to do their business uh, in the tank lately to see if that would work. What are you putting anything on your? Well, similarly, in? I'm I'm, uh, I'm reacting uh, nitrogen phosphate with a secret material to produce urea, and then I'm putting the urea in the tank as an experiment. So that's a bit, I think that's a bit more sophisticated version of okay. the dog. Okay. But um, um, <clears throat> well, I guess it. Uh, it makes a difference um, from a standpoint of what you have around the house that you want to use up. Like a lot of people have leftover hand sanitizer from when they thought the COVID scare was real. Now they think it's all over, but they have all of this uh, hand sanitizer they bought. And so they're putting it in the tank. But I don't advise it. Do you? Oh, no. No, my goodness, no. Yeah. For hundreds of years, we've been telling people not to do things like that, but I, I guess they don't get it. Well, it, is, um, it is, to be fair, boss, it is ethanol. So, you know, it, and we put ethanol in our tank. Are you it's, saying it's ethical? Uh, well. Oh, 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 oh ethanol. Oh, I, yeah, now I remember. Yes, it's ethanol, 15% ethical. Okay, but okay. It, but, but it's actually, they haven't broken the azeotrope. So that it's a much more dilute form of ethanol. As you oh. know, there's ethanol water form and azeotrope, but, but I digress. Okay, well, uh, people are not only paying more for gas, they're paying more for groceries. Uh, I was just looking at an ad, you know, for, um, well, for a, a local grocer. And what's interesting, what, what used to be called hamburger in the stores, now you can see the slide, now they're calling it cow parts, huh? It's, and and of course it's pretty pricey. Um, you you were telling me something about this the other day. That, well, just that this looks, reminds me of the benefits I get from my Amber Heard newsletter. Oh yes, I, I, Amber Amber Heard. Yes, I I've heard something about that. Um, there are, there are um, in fact. Um, let me, she talks a lot about inflation of certain, um, you know, domestic uh, uh, situations. But I think right now the thing that most people are worried about is shrinkflation. And I'm one of them because I used to buy um, the King Bow Wow biscuits from my dogs. They love them. I've been buying them for years. When I went to the store, I was happy to see same packaging, same price, it hadn't gone up at all. But when I got it home, I found out there were only two biscuits in this box. So I had to tell the boys who are already struggling with going out to the uh, gasoline. Well, anyway, I said, this has got to last you all month. I do have a question for Ann on the shrinkflation commentary relating to your, your work on Royal Shoe Size. It's rumored that Pr Prince Charles has very small feet, so that caused a sort of shrinkflation issue with Princess Di, and that's the actual reason that she left him. Well, see, I don't want to speculate on that sort of thing, but I can say you're definitely on the right track there. Okay, uh, you, some people's response to rising grocery prices along with shrinkflation and so forth is growing their own food. And so there's a lot of internet scams going on right now. One of them also, yeah, we've got the picture here. I downloaded it. It says you can grow your food and you'll never need to gas up again. I, I'm not sure how those are connected, well, except that according to your book on stomach problems, a lot of the vegetarian sort of meals cause extra gas. Mm. So you don't have to gas up. Indeed. I, I try not to bloat the issue too much, but um, ah, proper and breath control. Can you make sense of what he's saying there? Well, I was just going to say I, I've been a victim of one of these scams. See, my, my financial advisor, he's 15. I'm trying to give, uh, you know, I try to give the young people a good start in life. He told me he was selling me an NFT. It turned out to be a non-fungible tomato. 
and uh, it cost me $14,000, and I don't think I'm going to make a cent off of that thing. I had it in a salad. It was nice, but now it's gone. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of now it's gone, a lot of people had comfortable places to live in before, and now I, I have heard about a housing bubble. Um, Jack, I think you told me that you had moved into a housing bubble to save money. Yeah, it's actually, it's, it's fascinating technology because as you know, bubble size, maximum bubble size is a function of uh, surface tension of, of the material. And so what they've done is with breakthroughs in surface tension technology, we've now enabled uh, soap bubbles to grow to the size of a living room. So, uh, and, and they provide excellent insulation. So they, you, your air conditioning bill is low. You have perfect visibility. But you don't have uh, plumbing as such. Well, with the, you know, with, again, with the gas tank issue, there is, there's a way to make that work. Okay. Um, you said, Anne, that you're living in a media bubble. Yes, that's true, which was somewhat pleasant at first, except we don't have any control over which outlets live with us in the bubble. So as soon as some of those kind of right wing, the bit of the crazies, the hot air in there became so bad that I'm paying about $400 a month just to cool my home. And you're living in a tech bubble. Isn't that right, Lou? That sounds like it may be me. I, I may be guilty of this. Uh, between the various ways that I'm attending to my stomach concerns and the ways that I've found technology to sort of squeeze out just about the right amount of... Um... Squeeze out. You know, that, re that reminds me of an article that I read, and it was about... It, it was from the Journal on uh, Stomach Problems in America. Mm -hmm. It was talking about the cost of leaving. A lot of people have had enough, but they can't get out of here because it just costs too much. And, and, and you know, the new jobs report, you would think that with 400,000 new jobs that that would take some of the pressure off. But what I understand is that most people these days need at least two jobs to pay for gas. Gastronomically, yes, the pressure does. Gas and groceries. Are they, yes. pardon me, boss, they're, they're new jobs? I, I, well, I, I thought they were new jobs. This is, this is very disappointing. Well, they're new me. jobs. That's, that's um, working for Elon Musk and going up into outer space, you, you can't take much baggage. So I understand all of those people either nude or speedos, like they were influenced by the old jazz piano players. Um, anyway, uh, the job market is always up and down. Let's talk about Texas and Florida because that's where everything seems to be happening, everything bad anyway. Here in Texas, let's start with Texas. Governor Abbott, who is uh, fearing that he might not be reelected, he has promised that every county that votes Republican will be air conditioned. Now, he didn't say how, right? He didn't say what it would cost. I, I think that's a bunch of bluster, but let, I, uh, uh, Suge, may I jump in on this uh, and explain this map to the viewers and anyone who does not okay, know? Okay, okay. Um, see the numbers, the, the numbers there over yes, the city sir. of Houston. Now, this, denotes the numbers, the number of hours your electricity will be out after the grid fails. So it's sort of like taking a number at the butcher shop and that's where you are in line. So look for where your house is and, and you'll know. Okay. What, okay. what would, is there an explanation for the discrepancy between the, some of the, some of the areas with very large numbers and some with very small numbers? Well, I think if you really study the map, I think you'll know. Well, a lot of the, the, the small numbers is where you have the housing bubble people, I believe. My neighborhood appears to be an O2. Oh, good for you. Good for good, you. Good for you. Uh, anyway, no two. we have a governor, Governor Abbott. We have a lieutenant governor, Dan Patrick. And lately, he has been talking about, um, well, he didn't talk about this in public. He's talked about it in private. He said... I'm negotiating with Epcot to take over running our power grid. <laughs> the talks apparently went nowhere, so now he's claiming that he's through with Disney and 
they're going to cancel the Disney World War II that was scheduled to be opened in Texas. But Dan Patrick is not the only one in the news. His son, Ryan Patrick, recently recorded a conversation with local political homophobe Stephen Hotze. Mr. Hotze, in case you missed this story, he claims that he knew and his people had surveilled people who were moving ballots around in air conditioning vans so as to disturb the results of the election, or uh, disturb is my private uh, kind of comforting word. I understand that he actually commandeered some of those vans, right? He, the well, air conditioned vans now became part of his food network for the Holtzi poultry. And, and look at one of these vans here. The first, well, the first one I showed you said it delivers ballots. This one here, if you look closely at the, uh, the writing, and, and you have to magnify it to see it, but this says that, that they deliver ballots, you know, they deliver ballots. And I'm not saying that it turns out to be true, but everywhere I looked in the parking lots, I saw vehicles, like here's just a regular, you know, sedan, and it's saying that it does not only cable installation, but also election rigging. So maybe he's got something there. Maybe, maybe there are ballots all over the place here uh, that, I, uh, that are being driven around in vans, and that's why you want to crash your car into them and call out the police. And He could be onto something there, boss. I mean, they, uh, this could be the next, in, uh, instead of Luber Eats, this could be Luber Ballot Delivery. So do you all know of any other conspiracies about the vote stealing that are turning out to be true? I guess not. Well, there's, I think ballot harvesting is, again, going back to the food shortages. Well, when, yeah, when, that when people are, are ballot, ballot harvesting next, I think some of the less intelligent people think that that's actually true. Well, that, the, that Internet site I showed you where you grow your own food, it says right there that you can harvest ballots. Yes, and as actually, well as gassing up. I mean, we, you know, in my uh, crustaceans research, we have the back of precincts also doing their little like cookouts. So we have these ballot shallot mallets we distribute. I knew he was involved. Yeah, you, uh, he's got a get your financial advisor in. This sounds like a real get in on the ground floor of this. I think that indeed. But you should talk to your uh, your uh, frog leg uh, group about you know whether they want to go in debt to be part of this. Yeah, they, well, sadly, boss, they have to, uh, you know, there's a, the, their medical costs are quite high, you know, to, to get the, the little wheelchair because they, they, they can't walk anymore after their legs are gone. So that's, they, they, they could, I think, benefit from an investment like this. Let's, let's move from Florida to Texas. I mean, let's, let me put that the other way around. Let's move from Texas to Florida which is trying to out-retro Texas. Mm, um, nice level there. <laughs> wasn't that good? I retroed. Um, that's where people are always uh, talking about people who are woke as being asleep, but I think it's really sort of the other way around. Although Governor DeSantis claims it's a miracle what he's done there. Mm, and the red pill is a suppository. That's right. Uh, the biggest thing he's done lately is to attack Disney, the corporation, because Disney won't play ball with his popular theme about, uh, you know, gay people. So he wants to take over Disney World and make it Dizzy World, and he's installing some new rides. One of the first rides here will take you straight back to the 1950s. Now, give me that picture back again. There. See, what? I'm not sure... In this ride, I don't know if you have to climb all the way to the top there to get thrown back into the 50s, but apparently when you get there, you'll be greeted by some old, rich, white males. Um, anyway, that's the kind of ride that takes you backwards in a hurry. The second ride, you can show them now. This one, I understand they put you in a little room and they keep asking you the same question over and over, even though you've answered it. Sort of takes you back to 
the Supreme Court nomination hearings, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, and uh, Anne, I have to ask you about this last one. There's there's some kind of ride where you're in a dark tunnel and it's filling with water and you're in a rubber raft. Oh, it was, oh my goodness, it was not as described, not as marketed to me because the next thing you know, you are waist deep in water and you have two choices to get out of there, at least you think they're choices, and you either row or you wade. But turns out you really have no choice at all because if you choose to do neither, then you're sunk. Wow. I don't think I want to ride that one, but it's a bit of a Hobson's choice, isn't it? Indeed. You know, this, this uh, selection of new rides has inspired some people on the internet I don't know if this is a true fact or a fake fact. You know, I don't know what we call them anymore. Schrodinger's facts. Okay, yeah, you don't know until you break the glass and see if the cat is there or alive or dead. Well, anyway, anyway, there is another ride being talked about on the internet in which you encounter Mickey and Pluto uh, in the midst of doing something. It's I'm told it's X-rated, uh, whatever they're doing together, and um, it's also, there's probably an age restriction, so if you're over 18, I don't think you can even have a look, but y'all yeah, well, haven't... Uh, I, th I believe Minnie and Goofy are also involved. It's, it's a, you mean it's a menage... A, 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 a quattro, yes. A, a men, a quat oh, yes. Well, that would be interesting. Uh, not, another, not, not that I know about such things, of course, Bob. Yeah, but, but, but somebody told but you somebody when told you're me. telling I'm, me. I'm, I, after all, I am an investigator, so that's... Right, right. Um, you know what? Florida wasn't, uh, wasn't satisfied with math textbooks because, you know, you have this whole thing about critical race theory and making white people uncomfortable. So... They've been changing some of the books that were already approved in the system. For example, one of the math books was talking about base 10, showing young people how to use base 10 and telling them it could be fun to work with base 10. But that book got thrown out by whatever committee it is, and now they have a new book, Codename Base 10, telling the real story of vomit pizza. Um, that You have a chapter about that in the stomach problems book, but you don't really call it vomit pizza. No, no. It, it but was... I can read between the lines. Well, there were so many children expelled over this incident that it's not... Um... It's not for general public consumption. Okay, uh, another thing that got pitched out while they were looking at all the math books was a book about yoga. And uh, I think I, I've read the book by this guy, or at least I know who he is, Yoga Berry, you know, and I'm not even a sports fan anymore, Not certainly not of old catchers. But his book, Why Meditation Makes the Devil's Work Easy Peasy, it's a very short book. It's like nine pages. Um, so if you see that on the internet uh, at a special sale price, don't fall for it. But there's there's uh, there's many boo boos in that book. There are, and and uh, did you notice down at the bottom here? It says that it's based on the writings of Pope Milton II. You didn't tell me that. No, that that is true. Now, granted, he did. Uh, come back around behind uh, uh, another fella, uh, and and sort of they 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 were working together to try and get get yoga sort of shoved under the mat. No pun intended. Oh, okay. Um, another example of a a book that uh, Florida said is too dangerous. This this one has a bunch of you know uh, multiple choice questions, and in this one it's saying. Uh, if a government program's giving $225 billion in tax breaks to corporations and $58,000 to food banks for poor people, and then it's, it's got a bunch of choices, they all, 
Well, you know, everyone will be happy as a Jewish duck. I don't think so. A Jewish duck. A Jew oh, fascinating. No, I, I wasn't quite sure. I just didn't mean to wade into the middle of that. Okay, well, um, poor people, I think, I think the answer is number C. Poor people will hit the streets angrily. All right, not Jews then. Okay, okay, well, anyway, you can see that this, this kind of multiple choice question would make some people uneasy, and that's why they took it out of the book. Another, another uh, pamphlet that got removed from the schools, how many homophobes does it take to change a white bulb? Oh. That's interesting. I haven't read when I, when that. I, when I first read that, I thought it was, it was about hobos back in the 30s, but apparently I you know, so, misunderstood what it's Some about. hobos lived on trains, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. That was revealed in the new 1950 census, that, new in the sense that we finally get to look at it. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to, let's move from Texas and Florida to the, generally speaking, the new developments in the vulture wars, or some are calling them culture wars, but I, I think people are feasting on, uh, let, and, and let me start here at the top, because, um, um, you know, we just finished with the mad terms, and, and we are hearing a lot now about replacement theory because of what some of the nutcases are doing. And I don't quite understand the replacement theory, but I know the Republicans like to take radical ideas and then kind of mainstream them. So the slogan that I keep hearing about is, and this is in the context of the blue states and the red states, they say, um, the blues will not replace us. Mm, no, I thought that was a jazz theme from the 20s. Oh, that, yeah, the blues. Yeah, it, was, it was, I think, Dizzy Gillespie was a, a founder of that's that. That's right. That, the, that, that yeah. form of jazz, it's very, it's very challenging. It's uh, multi-octave shifts simultaneously with bongo drums. It was very political at the time, though. Yeah, well, it, it's well, very political now. Uh, as that, was, far that, that was during the days of the Red Scare, so he was able to tie in some of the Red Scare themes. Mm. Well, the Blue Scare was when blues records were coming out of Chicago and then Mississippi, and and uh, then all of the white, you know, young guitar players pretended like they invented the blues riffs. But anyway, I I, I digress too. Um, what I was trying to get to here, and let's let's back up a slide. A lot of people who are of the Republican frame of mind lately, and this is another one of those mainstreaming concepts, they're saying it doesn't matter if you're sort of in jail, you can still sort of run for office from your jail cell, I guess. Mm. Yeah, there's a quota. You have to have beaten so many relatives and so many wives, and then you have to go through a retraining, but then you're still free to join the ticket. Okay, that, that covers that. Um, next slide. This is very interesting to me. The, um, there's an article in the Nation's Notions here, and it's asking why Republicans ask uh, Katanji Jackson Brown so many questions about sentences. As I understand it, Ted Cruz and some people like him are actually trying to learn how to do sentences. They think it would improve their uh, communications ability. Well, this is true, boss. Uh, you know, they were very confused by the fact that, uh, that well, now Supreme Court Judge Brown Jackson spoke in very complete sentences. Right. Now, they have been unable to process sentences of more than two words, for instance, uh, want beer or lady bad. Um, that's uh, sort well, of the, the, their, their brains work a little different. So it's about, they speaking of, of lady bad, we just got a report. Uh, it, I'm sure you all read it because I, I sent it around. Something in the Supreme Court roundup is talking about the women who oppose uh, these, uh, the new Supreme Court decisions on abortion. It turns out that 
they have found in a study by a college, I think, that the women who oppose the decisions are lonely, they're not good cooks, and they probably don't have real jobs. Oh, bless your heart. See what I mean? Sounds like fertile dating territory for me. Well, speaking of fertile dating territory, there's a big response by people who want to protect abortion rights who think the real target of regulation should be of the male gender, if you get my drift. And so they are sponsoring the National Penis Registration Day. Um, I'm, I'm planning to attend if I'm... You said something about open carry. Yeah, I, I, I favor open carry in this regard. And, and backing up to one of the issues that, uh, you know, with, with the sperm migration issues I'm having, the, yeah. the boys are having trouble swimming. Right. So I've taken to cooling them off with the open carry. But I've, I'm also putting little tiny water wings on them and, and trying to teach them to flutter kick, and that, that isn't going too well. My, my frog group is encouraging me to teach them to frog kick. So there, there's hope. Fascinating. Uh, Believe in your dreams, honey. That's it. You know, there's, an, there's another story that was in the news recently that I think people got the wrong idea, so I just want to correct it. This was a, a Judge Mizell who was appointed by our former president, and people are saying that she uh, overturned a mask mandate. Well, what actually happened, because I'm, I'm looking at the article in the Legal Bugle, Trump appointed judge says no to masked man date. In other words, she was uh, on a blind date. I think she is, um, in a sense, politically blind. She was on a date and she said, no, not that guy. No mask mandate. It's going to affect my investments in Marvel and DC Comics ventures. I see. Uh, speaking of ventures, ventures makes me think about Elon Musk, who lately wants to buy Twitter. And since he said he wants to buy Twitter, somebody is already on the internet selling a Twitter quitter. I don't know how it works, but I guess... What you're trying to do is you're trying to cut off a certain commentary that you don't want to read on Twitter. Twitter. Um, We've already got a product that's best used in the bathroom. Okay. Okay. And, and here's, here's what I have heard. The, the site Twitter will be turned into an organic gardening sort of chat place. And so people have been talking about uh, whether Donald Trump would be allowed back on Twitter, but I think obviously he wouldn't be interested in uh, organic gardening, right? No, but he is going to be our mascot for that. That's for damn sure. I see. Uh, you were saying that he's still raising Cain. Does that count? Uh Yes, I suppose that uh, okay, so fomenting might, some things does count as a sort of garden. You might be doesn't. back, I guess. All right, uh, let me just cover this real quickly. We have so little time. Um, did you know in Tokyo they have just changed the rules for schools and now you can have uh, underwear in any color you want? A lot of people have been worried about the white cotton stuff that is just so bland. Now, will, will open carry be allowed in that context? I, well? I don't know. You're, you're the expert there, Jack. Uh, the USA recently was named the country of music awards. So, um, first of all, you, you've heard that the Emmys are negotiating with the World Wrestling Federation. They want to get a little bit more action-packed. Uh, the Emmys versus the Audis, that sort of thing. The Oscars are negotiating with the National Hockey League, same reason. The Grammys, um, and, and of, it even goes to film. Um, the fact-free films at the Cannabis Film Festival this year included one that is uh, by a Trump supporter or a group of Trump supporters. Um, it's called weaponizing the anointed one's cheeseburgers. I certainly want to see that before it's over. 
You know, boss, I was just thinking that some of these these pairings make a lot of sense that now that awards shows have gone full contact uh, combat, uh, the NHL and, uh, you know, pro wrestling, I think uh, we could we could have awards uh, for, for checking. We could have all sorts of what what do y'all think about that? I think, yeah, it will. It will uh, I have friends that are in the dental business in Hollywood, and I think it will really help as, as all our stars get their teeth knocked out. Almost certainly. I, I think I'm, I'm all for this. Okay, uh, I was I was going to add while we're talking about the all of these various awards that the Grammys are now including uh, categories for '80s bagpipe music and no wave music. The no wave I think is supposed to offend no one or or whatever. But you know, all of these investigators of mine. Uh, have at one time or another been part of the music business. Um, Lou, Lou Quorm, uh, one time was the Trump bass player for Depeche Commode. Mm. I, I know this. You don't talk about it much. I don't because we had to dump our music library. And Jack, Jack was the middle of the road manager for the winning uh, is... Well, no, no, for the uh, winner takes Allman band. Yeah, that, that, that was a great gig, boss. I mean, I, I just milked that for everything I could. And and uh, and you produced some very popular uh, LPs, uh, Meet the Puppets. Yes. And you also, I think, you were the guiding force behind Wish You Weren't Here. Um, anyway, that's true. So so much for their past careers. Let's talk a little bit more though about um, January 6th. There's some news about January 6th and I'll try to go through this quickly too. Um, first of all, there's a story, Mr. Uh, Esper, who was the Secretary of Defense, says that at one point Donald Trump was talking about protesters and he said we'll shoot them in the legs and um, lately he's been challenged because Mr. Trump said I know 10 people who will say that that is false well he then said he he didn't remember what their names are because he's not very good with names but he could pick them up he could pick them out of a lineup which is probably where you would find them where he hired them in the first place yeah yeah now, another development about uh, January 6th. It turns out President Trump wanted to march, but the Secret Service told him, you can't do that. There are no porticans on the route. And so he didn't go. Not only that, we have, I think the committee has a, a document that they got from the Secret Service which is talking about the fact that there were no porticans, and they told the president he's got to go back. But it also says President Trump was going to say, "I'll go back to the White House and I'll just uh, spend the day putting, you know, in my putting." Any and what happened was they said, "Well, look, the phones are not working at the White House. You won't be able to talk to anybody all afternoon." And he said, "That's okay." I'm not expecting any calls. I think he realized that he would have to give speeches at various points along the route. Without porta potties, he would have no place to leave them. Exactly. Uh, and then, of course, the the, the January 6th committee has a a, a new document. Um, they subpoenaed uh, some people who can talk about these documents. One of them is invitation to the January 6th discussion group. See that? See that picture? That's right. And then we have a transcript of a conversation between Mr. McCarthy, the minority leader, and President Trump, in which they are talking about him re-signing their deal, which was about shutting up. And Trump says, no way. And then... Not, not to brag, boss, but I, I contributed to retrieving that because I, I have a uh, connection deals with the effluent line from the White House toilet, so we were able to retrieve the... Uh... That, that, I'm glad you could. And here's a letter they want to ask uh, some congressman about. It's a letter to Congressman Jimmy. Um, 
And this is the oat keepers. Um, you've probably heard of the oat keepers. I don't know why they keep oats, but they're telling um, Congressman Jimmy something about the Jordan River and that they can't contribute two million dollars. And you know, you know, how it, very interesting stuff. Ivanka Trump. They thought she would take the fifth when she testified to the committee. She took the second. In other words, she said, whatever uh, Jared said, that's what I say. That's what I believe, okay? And um, then Mark Meadows has been asked recently about talking to Jenny Thomas, and he's saying, oh, you mean the rap artist, Jenny Thomas? You produced her record too, right? I did indeed. She was okay. a pleasure and, to work with. Yeah, and she plays crock pot. She plays a mean crock pot. I hear she's a wonderful person as well. Is that true? That's what Pretty she amazing. says. I thought she does meal delivery with those little menu items, the little cards, you know, for so many calories and hors d'oeuvres. And... Well, you would know about uh, things that affect the stomach, so I'm going to take your word for it. Are you confusing hip hop with hot pot or something uh, to that effect? It is very possible. I was thinking Jenny Thomas and her delivery service. And, oh, I see. And I, I suppose she's branched into Hot Pockets as well and little political statements that pop out like fortune cookies. I like to mix it all together. That's why I am a DJ of entrepreneurship. I, I want to say a couple of things about the 1950 census as we have to wrap up soon. Uh, that data has just been released. You know, it's, it seems like old and it is a long time ago. I mean, here we are in 2022, but the first thing that was interesting, this 1950 census says that only 21% of the population was living in caves. But that's not the whole story. Some of them were living underground. You just saw the sewer picture. That's where a lot of people were living, so they weren't counted. And not only that, other people were living on rooftops. I think that's because the view is better or because what? I, it's a forerunner of the housing bubble that we have well, today, I, right? In fact, I was just about to say, personally, I like to go on the rooftop of the media bubble when it just gets the hot air gets to be too much in there. Okay. You know, someone invites Alex Jones or somebody in there and it just, poo, got to go oh, up to the roof, cool off. Paint it right in a nice bright color so you get this sort of the sexual albedo going on. I, I understand. Um, other people, though, and we covered, I, I mentioned this before when you were talking about hobos. A lot of the population in the 1950s lived in train cars. Um, so they actually never had a physical address that uh, that and so the people who were conducting the 1950 census census uh, didn't even talk to these people so oh, of course not well I mean McCarthy back then was coming up and he was concerned about the hobosexual agenda that they were pushing that so the hobosexuals they, I remember <laughs> that well that was when all the jazz piano players were uh, coming out in speedos. But anyway, in the 1950s, guess what? Who was the most admired person? White D. Eisenhower. And in fact, it was old, rich, white men, generally speaking, who were most admired. Just a few, few other quick thoughts. Very few of the living persons in the 50s were actually deceased. Uh, New wave and grunge music were being highly anticipated by those people in the 1950s. And most people expected at some point in life to stop working and retire. But I guess as you were saying, Ann, you may as well live to 135 or 150 if you can make it, because that's when you'll finally get the big paycheck. You know, it's been a pleasure to bring together these investigators of mine who I haven't seen in so long because they've been doing very sensitive work. But now that we're all together and can relax, we're probably going to have a little bit of a, uh, a refreshment after the show because we made it through another one 
and we'll be back to see you pretty soon with even more information because you don't get the information we give you anywhere else. All right, now, boss, I do, as we partake of our investments, I, 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 have, I have some of my 40-year high research material. Okay, well, let's try that. You know, I wonder if that's what my investment advisor was talking about when he was speaking of 40-year highs. He might be involved with that sort of thing. I'll give you his card. Well, now I've got to remember to turn my phone back off. So I want to go to that same place again. But you invited me here. I know I You're making it my business. I'm too embarrassed to admit that it's confusing. Now which your boss is it that's really abusing? I find it badly, but I don't find it amusing. It's not a question here of winning or of losing. I really shouldn't be here. I really shouldn't say this. But you invited me here. You're making it my business. You say it's your birthday. We all have a birthday. Stop you when you assume that I think I have to talk you.